We've got some more now for you on that global cyber attack that targeted hospitals and businesses all around the world, holding many of them for ransom. Joining us now is cybersecurity expert Walter O'Brien, founder of Scorpion Computer Services. And Walter, you can tell us why the scope of this attack. Cyber attacks are not new, but this one was huge. It came fast and furious. Well, there's a combination of, of reasons for that. Um, it's, it's been covered by now that it's, uh, this started with the NSA. And they had developed uh, something called Eternal Blue. And Eternal Blue was violating uh, a vulnerability in Microsoft operating systems. That if they're not on the latest patch, it can get into any computer that's on the network that has that vulnerability. Now, the NSA knew about this three years ago. One option uh, that may, may have prevented this is if they notified Microsoft and said, hey, you really want to clean this up. But uh, their business is spying and hacking and keeping an eye on what's on people's computers. So maybe it wasn't in their best interest to close a back door. But you like to point out that the NSA should have kept this in a vault or someplace far more secure well, than where a, they were keeping it. that's a problem. It. Right now, the NSA doesn't use automated cyber testing techniques because of the length of their procurement cycle. That's six years for them to buy something. That means they're 96% vulnerable. Sorry, 94% vulnerable. Okay. Their stuff's only 6% covered. So one of the issues is if you're going to start developing cyber weapons, think of it like developing nuclear weapons or any other serious nationwide impact weapons, you need a secure vault to develop sure. them in so that people don't steal them from yeah. a field at night. It, it's terrifying so, to hear that they're hitting hospitals. What about banks? What about ATMs? What about nuclear power plants, dams? What do private citizens need to do also to protect themselves? Well, here's the thing. It literally will affect anyone on a Microsoft PC which is a lot of us, connected to a network, and that doesn't mean a company network. That can be just simply your Time Warner AT&T network that isn't on the latest patch, doesn't have the latest updates. And that can be from Windows XP forward, uh, all those different versions of Windows. So uh, just to finish a previous point, mm -hmm. they took Eternal Blue, renamed it WannaCry, attached, instead of it being passive, just spying, attached a payload to it, which encrypts your machines using ransomware, and then charges you 300 Bitcoin to get your, get your machine back. Sure. And because it's NSA-level encryption, and it's Microsoft, that's why it spread so quickly, affected so many people. I see. And it doesn't have a quick antidote, because it's state-sponsored encryption. Right. All right, so let's bring up this graphic, because you shared with me a couple of bulletproof, uh, bullet points, rather, to show that... Um, this attack is different from others. There's, you said, carpet bombing and phishing versus a targeted attack. Can you explain? Sure. Well, so there's, it's an epidemic right now. It's been going on heavily. So years ago, if there was an attack, maybe it was industrial espionage. Maybe one company had ticked off another company, or they were targeting General Motors or Boeing or someone like that with a lot of intellectual property they want to get their hands on. But nowadays, it's organized crime. It's basically, if I can send a spam email out or attack a thousand companies or a thousand businesses and some of them pay me ransom, then I don't care if they're dentists, doctors, mom and pop shops, right. dry cleaners, whatever. I don't care as long as they pay the Bitcoin. Right. And that's why you're saying it's ransomware or cryptoware. That's what we right. put up on that graphic. Uh, and then, um, and then, and what's interesting is now it's Bitcoin that they're asking for, not actual, you know, dollars on your credit well, card. Well, yeah, because it, that's harder to trace. Right. Do you think Bitcoin individuals the need it. to keep cash on hand? Do they need to keep their medical records available? Do they need to prepare in case they get hit and they want to go to the hospital? They can bring their records and say, I need chemotherapy. Here's my records. Don't depend upon your computers. Well, on the extreme end of what we call bug out bags. Right? Yes, uh, right. End of, the, end of the world type of Armageddon situation. Having all of that, at least locally on a, on a what they call a it's called a titanium or whatever. It's a thumb drive that wouldn't be affected by an EMP impact or a whole, keep it in what's called a Faraday bag. It's like a Faraday cage. Okay. Now, that's a little extreme, but still a good idea for survivalists. What makes more sense is a little more practical is do back up your stuff, but in snapshots rather than overlaying it constantly. Mm -hmm. Because the trouble with that is now you get the virus, you overlay it into your backups. Right. Whereas if you that's have, scary. here's a backup from a month ago that I haven't touched then you can go back to that and maybe can lose Can you just move it onto a storage between. device? Well, you can, but the trouble is a lot of people don't have the discipline to keep okay. doing it. And if they connect them like the cloud where it's updating every 30 seconds, it'll update the virus too. Walter O'Brien, thank you very much. Thank